Hello, this is Dr. Kitch at Angelo State University, and welcome to our webcast for lab number one, Pacing, in your Engineering 1307 Plane Surveying class. Here are the learning objectives for this lab. When you're done with this lab, you should be able to describe how important field notes are for the practicing engineer. And you should also be able to determine your individual pace length and measure distances using that pace length. And finally, you're going to demonstrate your knowledge of the field notes by taking field measurements in your field book. Taking quality field notes is an essential and ethical part of the engineering practice. Here's examples of field notes taken in 1831. They're still legible today and they clearly describe the survey that was done at that time. Field notes aren't just for you, they're for your clients and the public and they're an integral record of what actually happened in the field. If it's not in your notes, it didn't happen. You've all been provided a field book to take your notes in. We do not take notes on sheets of paper or loose leaf notes or notepads. They're taken in bound books. This is because they're a permanent record. Surveying companies keep their completed field notes in fireproof storage because they're so critical. Field notes are a permanent record of your work in the field. They're the source of all the later computations that you will do, and they have to be understood by those who didn't take the notes, so they must be clear. They're actually a representation of your professionalism and integrity as a surveyor or an engineer. They really are the most important and difficult part of field work. They take a long time to do them well, and it's critical that they're done that way. You must write clear and legibly in the field notes. It takes time. Take the time to do them correctly. You will be graded on your field notes. Taking good field notes is difficult, but very important. The format you use for notes will be specific to each different type of survey. However, each type of survey does have a standard format. The top of the page always contains a title clearly describing the survey being done. Most formats use a two-page form where the left page contains the tabulated data and the right page contains a sketch of the survey task. Sketches aren't to scale, but they're drawn neatly with a straight edge. The data always contains the date and the weather conditions. Weather is important to surveys and we need to record that information. You must also record which instruments you use and if they have serial numbers, record the serial numbers also. The information about who the surveyors were in the party and the role each of them had in the survey must also be recorded. And then finally, the signature of the team chief is required at the bottom of the page. This example is missing page numbers, but you need to include them in yours. Here are some rules for taking notes. You should always use a hard pencil, 2H or harder. Don't use ink because it bleeds when it gets wet. Hard pencils leave behind indentations in the paper and they'll show any erasures or alterations. You should never erase, but instead cross out errors and write them over again. Erasures indicate a, a potential problem with the veracity of your notes, and they won't hold up in a court of law. Write legibly. It's very important that you write not so you can read it, but so that somebody else can read it. And be sure to number all your pages. When you mark your notes, they must indicate whether they are original set of notes or copied notes. You will often be copying notes from another member of your team. That's perfectly okay, but you need to indicate they're original or whether they're a copy. If you don't write anything down, it's assumed that they are original notes. Pacing is one of the most valuable tools you have in surveying. One of its advantages is it does not require any equipment. It can actually be fairly accurate, as accurate as 1 in 50 or 1 in 100 over lengths up to 300 feet. It's actually accurate for many, many purposes in surveying, and it's actually useful things well beyond surveying, such as golf. Most golfers use pacing to determine their location on the golf course and their distance from the pin. The procedure for this lab is really very simple. We've established a 300 foot long path along a level surface and marked it off in 100 foot segments. All you need to do is walk the length of each segment using your normal gait and count the number of paces in each segment. You will repeat this three or four times. And then you can compute the number of paces per 100 foot length and then you can average those to get the average length of each pace. The area we'll be doing this lab 
It's located in the quad between the mayor building and the engineering offices at the West Annex. The pacing path we'll be using is shown by the points 0, 1, 2, and 3 on this figure. These three 100-foot segments will always be laid out and have chaining pins to mark the locations. You'll have to set up your data table on the left page of your field notes and sketch the pacing area on the right-hand side. You can do this before the lab if you wish to. You will then pace the full 300 length three times, recording the paces for each 100-foot segment. From that, you'll be able to compute your average pace length. Once you've determined your pace, you will determine the lengths along the sides of one of the polygons shown here. Your instructor will assign you one polygon for each team. You then pace along each side of the polygon and record the number of paces along the length and from that compute the length of the polygon. Your lab manual has more complete instructions, so please refer to that. As we said, laying out your field notebook is critical. Before you come to lab, you need to lay out the very beginning of your notebook, including the inside cover, which should look like this, and the second set of pages, which is your table of contents. Your table of contents should look like this. Here is the layout that we'll be using for your pacing lab. Please note it and follow these instructions carefully. Note that in the lower right hand corner this one is marked as an original. Every student should be keeping their own set of notes for this lab with their own pacing. You need to each individually determine your pacing. For future labs there will generally only be one set of notes kept as an original and the others will be copied. But for this lab, everybody should have an original set of notes with their own pace length determined. Well, that's all there is to this lab. It's really quite simple, so we'll meet you in the field. Be sure to be on time and come prepared. Thanks.